Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's edition of Talk to Your Profits for Real Estate Investors with Shenny CPA. My name is Matthew Lippman. I'm a senior manager here at Shenny CPA, where we deliver premium accounting services to real estate investors to help drive profits and growth. As always, we have our founding partner, Charles Shenny, that is here to discuss with me today. What's up, Charles? How are you doing, Matthew? Long time no see. It's been a whole week. <laughs> it's been a week of hard work. I've seen you a couple of times throughout the week, but not on live TV. But here we are today, and uh, we're here to discuss uh, an interesting topic, uh, a very practical topic, something that, you know, if you're a real estate investor, you got to know about this stuff. And it's about how to sell your property, listing real estate properties for sale. Oh, okay. So it's not really tax related this week. Not tax related, but still people need advice on, on this topic because often people don't know, should I use an agent for, to list my property? Should I do it myself? Absolutely. What are the costs involved? What are the different agreements that I could have with the listing agent? So that's what that's, we're here to discuss today. It's definitely important. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, great. So the first question, um that uh my first question is what what is it that a real estate investor needs to decide um once he makes the decision that he wants to sell his property so first of all i want to at the outset i just want to say i'm very biased because i don't believe in selling properties mm. uh, generally speaking and uh, we, that's not for today's discussion but uh you know real estate is a long-term investment and um, there's many ways to take your profits out without selling. Mm -hmm. but like I said, that's for a different topic. And maybe we should include that uh, one of these days. As no, I, I, think, I think it is. It's interesting. Uh, it's an interesting point. You don't like to see it because, you know, there's there's ways for to avoid paying the taxes on it, but to get the cash out of the property. Right. Absolutely. But that's that's for another day. So. That's to your question was, what do you do once you decide you want to sell your property? Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, it depends if it's a purse, if it's a residential personal home or whether it's a multi-unit residential building or whether it's a, a commercial building. Um, but first of all, you have to consider the tax aspects of it and you should speak to an accountant to let you to inform you as to how much tax you're going to pay. So he will do, he or she will do a, a calculation for you. And so you could, so there will be no surprises. Mm -hmm. That being said, uh, you're going to have to decide on which way you want to proceed to sell. Um, so now, first of all, you can list it with an, with an agent. Um, if it's a house, there's, there are numerous agents out there. Um, you should interview them and make sure that's it's that's within your that's they have the same philosophy as you, and discuss the price with them. Um, the prices are out there because you know there's a lot of comparables. Uh, if it's commercial property, it's a little bit more. Uh, it's a little bit more. Uh, let, let's just say, it's it's going to be tougher to find. Uh, everybody has, every agent has a different type of specialty. So you would have to find somebody that specializes in your, in the type of property you're selling. You can't just take any agent and, and then try to sell it. Mm -hmm. it. It becomes much more technical. So that's the first thing is to find uh, a, an agent that you can work with uh, and, uh, and then and take it from there. Do you always uh, do you always think it's best to go with an agent? What about uh, offering the property for sale by owner? Well, the, you would definitely save on commissions. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally don't. I I don't recommend it because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, let's say emotional aspects to selling a property, and you know you may think that your property is worth you know it's it's an amazing property and it's worth so much because and but you know there's a lot of emotions involved in that an agent will, will you know it will separate that and will you know uh, put it 
put it in a more factual way on how much the property is worth. And so I believe a good agent, a good agent, and I, like I said before, there, you have to really do your homework to find a good agent, uh, is worth the money and is worth the fees. Right. Okay. Interesting. And um, so once you once you've completed that part in the process, you found an agent. They have the same philosophy as you, and you you both agreed on a, on a listing price. Um, you're you need to you need to sign a contract with this agent, right? Is there different types of contracts that you could sign with the agent, or is it all There's, the same? There are so many different types of contracts, but let's just go to the, the two basic ones, which is in a, you would ask for either an exclusive listing or uh, what we call a, an MLS, which is open to all other to to all the agents, and that's uh, th that's a personal decision. Obviously, if it's an MLS. Uh, you know, more people have access to that information and you may be able to sell it quicker. There may be other reasons why you would want exclusive, uh, you know, such as, you know, you, you don't want your competition to know that you're selling uh, and for, or for whatever reason. So that's your decision. The, the generally, if it's, if it's, an, if it's a, an MLS, then your agent would have to share her, her or his commission with the other agents that's selling it, unless she's also the one that's selling the, the property. Okay. So in an MLS listing, I, I'm still not clear on what the difference is between an MLS and exclusive. An MLS is open to every, it's, it's open to every, all the agents, it's open to the public. It'll be listed, you can see it, uh, you can see it on the internet. Everyone will know that you're selling uh, you're selling your house or your building or what or so versus exclusive it's what it's it's what the word says it's more exclusive it's only the agent is aware of it mm -hmm. you can decide whether you want to list it or you you want the you want the agent to do it more pro in a more private way to to sell the property now exclusive could be good is if the agent already has potential buyers okay so she just wants to present give it Present it to those to those buyers. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're, they're out of town buyers, or they're out of uh, out of the country. Um, you know, for example, there's many uh, many properties are being sold to in the Asian market, uh, and uh, so they don't really need MLS on that. They would, they will go directly to to right. their Asian contacts and, and sell it there. So it's kind of, it's like a, an exclusive. It also means off market. All yeah, thing. yes, it's, yeah. Okay. It's, it's for another word, another way of, of uh, wording it. Okay, cool, cool. All right, uh, very interesting. I mean, uh, I that, that's all the questions that I had for you today about listing a property uh, for sale. I uh, mean, obviously, there, there's other aspects after you have an accepted offer, inspections, and uh, due, due diligence on, on the property. But I think we'll leave that for another episode, um, unless you have something that you'd like to add to this segment. Well, I mean, you made a, you made a good point. Um, whoever the buyer is going to be, if you're selling a commercial property or multi-unit residential property, um, they're, they're going to want to do their due diligence. So before you sell it, you should do your own type of due diligence. Get your books ready, your rentals, all of your expenses. Get your invoices. Get your invoices. Make sure everything's there because you can be assured that they're going to start looking at. Gonna, they're going to start looking. They're going to want to see those mm -hmm. documents. Also, you know, uh, bring in an inspector yourself. Have have them check the property. Make sure there's no hidden there's no hidden defects there's mm -hmm. nothing that that could uh, sway the, the the buyer the potential buyer to not go ahead with the purchase so that would be something good to do ahead of time. Interesting. What about uh, what about bringing in uh, an independent appraiser to come and take a look at the value of the property before selling it? Absolutely. I mean, uh, if you're looking at um, if you're looking at commercial properties uh it's very important to get an appraiser because you you may think your value is x 
I mean, mm-hmm. agent the value is wide, but an appraiser, you know, uh, will 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 set you on the right, you know, in the right path. You don't want to undersell, uh, and I've seen that happen. People get these offers; they think it's a fantastic offer. Mm-hmm. And you and I know uh, specific people like that, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, you know, the next day they regret it because they realize they 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 severely undersold it, even though because the numbers look so amazing that they just they were blinded by the by that and then they realized they could have sold it for you know 25 percent more than than what they they sold it for absolutely so, i agree if, there, if, if, the, if the price tag if the price tag is high enough you should spend money on even multiple appraisals to make sure that yeah. you yeah. get that the best one possible yeah i mean every appraisal is you know 1100 to let's say 1500 dollars mm. if you're selling a major property get as many appraisals as no brainer no brainer no brainer awesome awesome so that's it for today i really enjoyed our discussion um thank you for being here with me today it's really great to to uh, talk to you again and uh, if any of our clients need to get some more information you can contact me or yourself matthew and uh and you can book a call with us and we'd be happy to help you Absolutely. And, you know, our following is slowly growing. It's taking a little longer than we would like it to, but it is it is growing. So for any of our viewers out there, if you'd like to uh, hear any type of discussion on any specific real estate tax topics, accounting topics, drop us a comment in the box below and uh, we'll, we'll make sure to add that to our list. And uh That's it for today. Until next time, have a good week and happy real estate investing.